We start our series where the player starts, opening up the game for the first time and signing in. Player identities are important for saving and loading game data, providing features like friends and leaderboards, and making the player experience consistent across different devices. In this video, we'll create a new project and start working with the Unity Cloud dashboard. We'll implement anonymous or guest authentication for quick play and eventually returning players. We'll set up Unity player accounts as the first player identity provider. And then in the next videos, we'll cover identity platforms like Apple Game Center, Facebook, and Google Play Games. From here, you're welcome to skip over those and go right to the player data video where we'll save and modify player data with cloud code and cloud save. Then you can continue on with the series from there. At the link below, we also have a discussion post on this starter project and the larger player hub in the Gem Hunter project. I'll start by creating a new project using the latest version of Unity 6 and the Universal 2D template. I think it's easiest to follow along with a blank project. You can use an existing project, but it needs to be connected to the Unity Cloud. And that's the default for new projects, as indicated by the cloud icon. Let's click Create Project. And then once everything is loaded, let's hop over to the Unity Cloud dashboard at cloud.unity.com. My dashboard opens to Gem Hunter, so I want to find our tutorial project. I'll go into Projects. And there it is, UGS tutorial series. Your dashboard may not have all these shortcuts to the services on the left. I launched these in our Gem Hunter UGS project. To check these out, you can add them with the plus on the left. The project screen recently changed a little. Forgive the edit. We've been working on the series for a while. You can also find the services in the services tab here. Then you can scroll down to the new services to try category where there's a description of each service. You can learn more or click launch. Let's find player authentication. Uh, there it is. Let's go ahead and click Launch. And now we can add an identity provider, and there's a whole list to choose from, but we're going to start with the Unity Player Account Authentication, which is the easiest identity to start with since it's integrated and doesn't require a third-party SDK or set up in another dashboard. Add Unity Player Accounts and enable the iOS Android platforms. And now we have our first potential gotcha. You must add PC as a platform to be able to test things in the editor. If you don't have this checked, the sign-in example we're about to use won't work. Instead of the Unity Player sign-in screen, you'll be taken to a Something Went Wrong page, and it's kind of hard to know what went wrong. For the Terms of Service, you can leave this blank because we're just doing a little example project, but for your professional projects, check the Before You Publish Your Game section in Unity Player Accounts in the Tutorial section of the Authentication Documentation. Click Add Provider, and now we see we have an active provider. And then let's switch over to our new blank project in the editor. Open up the Package Manager, and in the Unity Registry, we want to install the Authentication Package. In the list of packages, it's the last package that starts with the letter A. There it is. Go ahead and click Install. Also import the UI example in Samples. We're going to run the Unity Player Account Sample Scene first, take a look at the code, and then create our own implementation based on that. OK, with that installed, go to your Project Settings window, and then go down to Services and Authentication. And there you'll see all the identity providers we have active, right now just Unity Player accounts that we added in the dashboard. Note that our client ID here is the same as the dashboard. You can also click on Unity Player accounts, which has the same client ID and some other settings we can leave default. In the Project folder, go into Samples, Authentication, in UI Examples, and open the Unity Player Accounts UI example scene. The Sign In with Unity button calls Start Sign In Async in the Player Accounts demo script. Double click on the Player Accounts demo script and let's take a look at that method. Start Sign In Async first checks if the player is already signed in with their Unity Player account. If they are, the player already has an access token from the Player Account service which acts like a ticket that grants them identity across games and platforms. The token is used in the Sign In with Unity method to authenticate with the Unity Authentication service. If the player is not signed in, like they're a new player to the game, Start Sign In Async is called, 
and that will open up the Unity Player Account sign-in page, which we'll see in a moment. Once the player has signed in, an event will fire, the player account service .instance signed in event, and the same sign in with Unity method is subscribed to this event. Let's take a look at the sign in with Unity method. Sign in with Unity calls sign in with Unity async with the player's access token. This method serves a dual purpose because it either authenticates an existing player who has used this Unity player account before, or it creates a new authentication profile if this is the first time the Unity player account is being used with this game. In both cases, the connection is established between the player's identity and the game-specific authentication needed for Unity Gaming Services. Let's start a new line here and look at the other sign-in options that the authentication service gives us. Okay, so the first one we see is sign-in anonymously async, which is for a guest account or quick play without requiring any player input. Sign-in anonymously also recovers cache credentials, and we will talk about this in detail soon. Okay, we also have sign in with Apple, Apple Game Center, sign in with Facebook, Google, even Oculus, and Steam. And there's Unity. Let's just press play and do the sign in with the Unity account and see what it looks like. All right, there's our sign in screen. And note that a Google and Apple sign in is also offered here. You may need to set up an account. I already have one, so I'm just going to sign in. Now we're signed in. Make note of the first three or four characters of your player ID because we want to check that in the dashboard. Go back to the dashboard and then go to your project page, to your project, and then on the project page, scroll down and you'll see that player authentication is now active. Next, click on player management on the left. You may need to add the shortcut to it if it's not there. And there we see the player ID that we saw in the console. Click on the player ID and we can see that the player has a linked identity with Unity player accounts. Now that we're familiar with the dashboard and setting up identity providers, let's move to working in a blank scene. Start by creating a canvas and add a layout group with some simple UI buttons underneath. You can start out with the first one we'll do, the anonymous button, and then just add them as we go. Create a new script called Login Manager and attach it to a game object of the same name. And we'll start building this out starting with the first button, which is called Anonymous, but in a game would be called Guest Play. What we're going to do is look at different code snippets from the documentation and then put it all together in one script. You can refactor things later if you like. Before we start, let's look at all this in context. When signing in the first time, signing in anonymously creates a guest account. So this is what happens when you click Quick Play or Play as Guest as we have here. From here, you can link an identity from another platform. In Gem Hunter, you do this by clicking on the Account Menu button. An anonymous account can't be retrieved on a new install or a new device, so linking an identity is important for players to save their progress. On a new start, you can also sign in through an identity platform, which is what we did with the Unity Player accounts at the start of the video. This time I'll choose Facebook, which I'm already signed into, and then we can see in Account Management that Facebook is linked. From here, we could link other accounts if we wanted. For the rest of the video, we'll be building a bare-bones version of this. Let's head over to the documentation on Anonymous Sign-In, and I'll just read it. Anonymous Sign-In creates a new player for the game session without any input from the player. It's a quick way for a player to get started with your game. This kind of authentication doesn't work across different devices or even the same device if a user uninstalls and reinstalls a game. Let's copy this Sign-In Anonymously async method and paste it into our Login Manager script. Since sign in anonymously async returns a task and uses the async await pattern, we need to include the system.threading.tasks namespace at the top of our script. In Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, you can easily add this by right clicking on task, selecting quick actions and refactorings, and choosing to add the using directive using system.threading.tasks. The key line here is the line sign in anonymously async what we saw before looking at the Unity Player account example. If we want to trigger this method with a button or subscribe to a button click event, we'll need to make an async void wrapper method that is not a task because Unity's buttons require a void return type. We'll also need to initialize the Unity services. Let's do that in the awake method. And now we can set the button to trigger start anonymous sign-in. On the anonymous button, 
scroll down and the on click. You can drag in the login manager and then trigger start anonymous sign in. Play the game and let's try it. Click the anonymous button and then in the console you'll see a player ID that looks familiar because this is the same player ID from our initial Unity login from the example. If you skip to this chapter and didn't do the previous one, you may see something different here. Anonymous sign-in actually handles various credential scenarios for us. So if you check the documentation, it says, if a session token is cached on the SDK, then the sign-in anonymously async method recovers the existing credentials of the cached player, regardless of whether they signed in anonymously or through a platform account. Sign in anonymously, therefore, recovered our existing credentials, the session token we had from signing in with our Unity player account identity. Let's go back to the dashboard and delete this Unity account linked player so we can have an anonymous player instead. Click on the player, and then in the upper right, click delete, and then delete player. Back in the editor, press play, and let's click our anonymous button again. Now you'll probably see an error when you do this because we have saved token information for the previous sign-in we did with the Unity player account. Okay, yeah, it says the session token is invalid and has been cleared. The associated account is no longer accessible through this login method. Go ahead and click the same button again. And now with the previous token info cleared, sign in anonymously sees we don't have any cash credentials, so it creates a new anonymous player with a new player ID. To confirm this, let's check it out in the dashboard. Once again, look at the first three or four characters of the player ID. Back in the dashboard, refresh the page. And there we see the new player ID. Click on that player. And where we saw Unity player account before, now we have none because this is an anonymous player. What we're going to do next is link this anonymous account with our Unity account. And once again, the code for this is in the documentation in Unity Player Accounts Tutorials. Scroll down, or you can click on the headings on the right. Here we have some code for signing in a returning player or a new player, just like from the example. And then right after that, we have update a player from anonymous to a Unity Player account. Once again, let's copy all this and paste it into our Login Manager script. And we could just paste this link with Unity async at the bottom. Now, I don't really want us to have to make a bunch of buttons here, so let's try and handle the sign-in or the linking in the same method. And that will help us make sense of the state of the player's identity in each situation. Let's go back to the player accounts demo script to the start sign-in async method. Let's copy start sign-in async and paste this into our login manager. And let's change the name from start sign in async to start unity sign in async just because we're putting everything into this one manager class for now. Let's also bring over the sign in with unity method and the event subscription to player account service instance sign in as well. Sign in with unity, let's put after start unity sign in async. And then the signed in event subscription goes in awake. Let's rename the method sign in with Unity to sign in or link with Unity because we want it to handle both. If you like, you can also copy over the UI logging, but I'm going to delete it. This method should handle sign up or linking, so therefore our question is, how can we know if the player needs to link their account or sign up? And furthermore, another related question is, how do we know what account or identities are linked with the player? We can check that in the dashboard, but how do we check it in the code? All right, so let's make this more explicit. We have the three scenarios. The player is not yet authenticated, so they are signing up with Unity. The player is authenticated, but does not yet have a Unity ID, and the player has authentication and a Unity ID. First, we can check authentication service.instance.isSignedIn. signed in. If the player is not signed in with authentication, that means they're a new player without credentials. In that case, the player is signing into authentication with their Unity player account identity. 
This works for both sign up and sign in, like you installed a game on a new device and you want to sign in to pick up where you left off. We can check whether the player has a Unity ID through checking it in their player info. I'm just going to make a method that returns a Boolean on that. Back in the sign in or link with Unity method, we can check if they don't have a Unity ID. And if they don't, let's link one. The sign in and linking use the same access token from the Unity player account service. So remember at this point, the start Unity sign in async method was called and or the player has already signed in. So they'd have the token they need for both of these. And finally, if the player is signed in and they have a Unity ID, let's create a log that the player's already signed in. And then set up your button to call the start Unity sign in async method. Once again, dragging the login manager to the on click and selecting start Unity sign in. Play the game. And at this point, we need to click on anonymous to sign in anonymously. We'll code anonymous sign in to happen automatically next. And now let's click on the Unity button. And in my case, probably yours, I'm already signed in. So I'll just click continue. And our logs are telling us that we have successfully linked. Let's head over to the dashboard and check this out. And there we go. The anonymous account is now linked to a Unity player account. Before we move on to Facebook, Google, and Apple, we have a really important step. As I've said a couple times, anonymous sign-in recovers existing credentials for a cached player. So we want to do this at the start. In your start method, check if a session token exists. You can think of it like you're checking the player's pockets to see if they have some previous ticket. If they have no tickets, they're brand new. If they have some kind of session token, sign them in and they will be signed in with their previous credentials. Ah, but our method is sign up anonymously async. Let's do that, but then change the name of this method to sign in, which conforms to what we're actually calling. By now you know this method handles both, though this will only be called here if there is a session token, that is, the player is a returning player who has already passed through authentication. Looks like Visual Studio made this a task. Let's make it async void, so it's actually our start method. And then let's change the name of this method to sign in anonymously async. And just to make this clear and explicit, this is how you should do things in your game so that when a returning player opens up the game again, they don't have to sign in or anything. They can just pick up right where they left off. That's what sign in anonymously async is there to handle. In addition to guest play, this method will check if the player has any credentials and they'll be signed in with them. We'll cover Facebook, Apple Game Center, and Google Play games in the next three videos. If you want to continue working with what we've covered here, you can set up more buttons for actions like unlinking the account from Unity, which does not require an access token, signing out of the authentication service and or the Unity player account service, clearing session tokens, and deleting the player's account. If you want to skip over the identity platforms, join us in video number six, Player Data.